Thanks very much. I, I have a few slides I'll show just to highlight some of the things I'm going to say. I have to say my two young sons are big fans of Gangnam Style and I really don't understand what it's communicating, but you know, hopefully one day I'll learn and, and we can uh, learn how we can translate that into selling some of the, some of the messages we have on sustainability. Um, so first of all, thank you very much to Terry for inviting me here today. I want to share a little bit of our analysis at OECD on some of the important technologies that are helping to move towards sustainability, but also to show you why these aren't yet enough and what we can do in terms of the know-how, as Lena highlighted it, know-how in terms of policies to actually drive more transformational change. The, our work at OECD is really working primarily with governments to help them to develop better policies for better lives. That is our intention, better policies for better lives. And while we're basically an economics-based organization at heart, we recognize that the current economic system is in the current economic model has not been working. So our Secretary General has, has been very clear in saying that the only growth model out there today is green growth. There are no alternatives, there's no other story, it's just green growth. And we're working with countries to try and look at how to make that happen, working across different disciplines, working with delegates from across different uh, ministries, economics, finance, trade, agriculture, etc. We're trying to make that happen. Now, first of all, just a, a brief note on some of the, the new technologies and innovation, and, and people have been highlighting this over the last couple of days. There is a, a great potential from what we're seeing already today. And this includes things from uh, drip uh, irrigation systems and targeted uh, fertilization systems to cheaper and cleaner solar-powered lamps in Africa, for example, uh, to smart meters in the home, which can help uh, households better monitor and use and minimize their energy use to new developments that have helped to bring down significantly the costs of clean energy. For example, uh, pulling down PV module costs uh, by 80% since uh, 20, 2008. There's also new developments in terms of uh, technologies, handheld devices and, and others, remote sensing, that can help governments and civil society to monitor illegal logging and, and fish catches in real time. And finally, uh, in Paris, we have uh, two of these systems uh, which allow us uh, uh, to do uh, bicycle and car sharing at the city level, which helps to lead to a much more sustainable urban transport system. So there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of new technologies and developments and a lot of potential. But one of the things we know is that these have not been used at the scale and at the pace. They've not been developed and used at the scale and pace that we need to outweigh the changes that we're seeing in terms of demand. These benefits, the benefits of these technologies have not been enough. The scale of demand for new cars, for more products, for bigger houses, for more meat, etc., has really outweighed uh, the new technologies and developments. And a number of colleagues have been saying that over the last couple of days. Um, so what you can see on this slide here is just one example of this. <coughs> And we've seen that global extraction of most natural resources, despite these benefits, these technological developments, uh, for most resources, they have been continually increasing since 1980 and across different countries and regions. And this trend is likely to continue in the future. We're moving to having 2 billion more people on the planet in the, in the coming decades. And by 2030, it's expected that there will be 3 billion more middle-class consumers. Now let me just highlight this uh, briefly in terms of what this means for the future with the example of greenhouse gas emissions. Now as we know, uh, developed countries have been responsible for the majority of greenhouse gas emissions to date and remain the highest in terms of their per capita emissions. At the same time, they've also been investing quite a bit in reducing their emissions per unit of output. So what you can actually see on this graph here is not all that surprising. And uh, Professor Gosha mentioned this earlier today. Um, because of the state of entropy that we see with uh, development, it's not that surprising that, in fact, emissions for some of the developing and emerging economies are <coughs> higher, the emission intensity of the economy. But that's going to be brought down over time. Just through technical, technological progress and efficiency gains, we're expecting these to come down. And you can see that um, on the left-hand side uh, scale. So going down, this is uh, 2030. So in fact, the emissions per unit of uh, GDP is going down for all regions of the world. 
And by 2050, even under a business as usual scenario with no new policy developments, we'd be expecting that in most regions it'd be 0.3 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per unit of GDP or less. So that's impressive efficiency gains, impressive uh, benefits. But at the same time, it is nowhere near enough. Over that same time period, total emissions will have risen from 48 gigatons today to 81 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. So it's not enough despite the technical progress. We need to do a lot more. But what can we do? And some of the analysis that we're doing, looking across a range of different countries on some of the policies that are helping to drive technology, show that one of the clearest and, and, and most important uh, signals we can send is a clear policy signal to help uh, accelerate green innovation and drive some of the systemic changes we need. So this figure shows some of the results we've done looking at uh, new patenting in clean energy technologies. And you can see there that in 1997 is when the Kyoto Protocol was adopted. Um, and if you look at these different technologies, these are various uh, clean energy technologies, and you can see around about 1997 there's quite a significant peak and increase in patenting activity and innovation related to these technologies. Now we all know that the Kyoto Protocol was nowhere near enough in terms of a policy signal, nowhere near enough. But at the same time, it still sent quite a clear signal to investors and to inventors. So there was some private sector action in response to this. But the exact policies that are used will have to differ by country and by technology. And you can see that a little bit from this slide, which shows some of the relative importance of different policies for, specific, for innovation and specific renewables and renewables overall. And you can see that between wind power and solar energy, the policies that have helped to drive innovation in these areas have, been, have differed quite a bit. So you need a mix of policy instruments. You need uh, certainly pricing of uh, resource use and pollution. You need investments in R&D. You need technology standards and others. But one of the things you can also see from this graph, which is interesting, is the importance of general inventive capacity. And that's the yellow bars on the right-hand side. And that's consistent across all of these and across uh, other areas of our analysis. Governments need to focus on basic R&D support, support to technical education more broadly, rather than trying to pick specific technology winners. Having this broad capacity uh, for inventiveness is important. And so, in fact, the work that uh, Dr. Srivastava and her colleagues are doing at the Terry University is particularly important in this regard. It's helping to build that capacity. And finally, this slide highlights some of the reasons and part of the story for why we aren't yet seeing the radical technological changes and the systemic changes and transformations that we need to move to a rapid uptake of clean alternatives. What you can see here is what's happening in terms of uh, subsidies to energy, different types of energies in the world at the moment. Now we know that governments worldwide are struggling to try and put a price on pollution, to put a price on natural resource use, because these prices can help drive in, uh, innovation and uptake of clean technologies. But not only are we not succeeding in putting a price on these, we're actually subsidizing the pollution instead. Um, so what you can see here is that uh, for OECD and IEA, we estimate together that uh, global subsidies for production and consumption of fossil fuels amount to about $600 billion per year at the moment. $600 billion per year encouraging greenhouse gas emissions through fossil fuel subsidies. In contrast, in terms of subsidies to renewable energies, governments are giving $88 billion per year in 2011. So there's an order of magnitude difference still in favor of supporting fossil fuels. So it's not a great surprise that in fact we're not shifting this picture towards more clean energy and clean technologies when that's the way the government support is going. We've also done some analysis looking at some of the impacts of removing this support, in particular the impacts on households and different income groups. And one of the things that we find is that there would be income gains for most countries from fossil fuel subsidy removal, consumer subsidy removal. There would be less greenhouse gas emissions and there would be income gains and GDP gains. The trick is how to do this in a way that you can transfer some of the results, some of the money that's saved through these subsidies to better target pro programs directly to support the poor and address poverty. So we're trying to help countries to do that and advise governments to do it. 
If we want innovation at the scale and pace that we need to help move towards more sustainability, we need to put in place the right policies. And I hope that everyone here today in the room and through this conference has helped to learn some of the new policies and approaches that can help us move that way. Thank you.